<laughs> this is for you. Give it to me. Say hello. Hi. Tell everyone who you are. I'm grandson. Hello, grandson. Hey, Caroline. I got to see your Zippo session. How good You did. It was fun, right? That was awesome. I really enjoy kind of bringing the songs into different contexts, singing them in different ways, bringing different emotions out of them, and acoustic is always fun for me. It's the earliest way that I was brought into rock. It was the first type of rock that I was really influenced by was kind of acoustic stuff and more stripped down stuff, so it's, it's nice to return to that sometimes. Is it harder to play for a smaller crowd now that you've done it for a bigger crowd? Not particularly. It's definitely a different, um, it's a different feeling, um, but... I enjoyed the intimate stuff because that was my earliest memories as a performer were in empty rooms for, you know, 10, 15 people. So it's nice to have that kind of intimate connection, but it's definitely, uh, it, it makes you nervous in a different way. But I think if you're not nervous, then you don't care. So I'm grateful for it. So um, I absolutely love what you're putting on the air lately. Thank you. It's got a completely different sound than anything else that I'm spinning. And that's what makes it so excited. So how do you describe what it is you do? Um, I, it's a great question, and I get it a lot. I, I think that I, I don't spend too much time worrying about what, what genre it is or what to call it. I, I call it alternative. I think it's a continuation of a process that's as old as rock music itself, which is trying to bring um, a spirit of rebellion and counterculture in some capacity mixed with music that your parents might not enjoy as much. So for me, I'm passionate about electronic music, I'm passionate about hip-hop, and I'm passionate about rock and roll. So for me, it wasn't um, some laboratory experiment to make the kind of music I make. I just wanted to bring little bits and pieces of each so that I didn't feel like I was like cheating on one with the others. I didn't want to feel like I was being like a rock cover band or like a white rapper or a DJ. I didn't want to do any of those things. I just wanted to be myself and make music that, that I enjoyed. And, and I'm really grateful that what I enjoy is resonating with other people in some small way. You know, it's pretty, pretty sick. I was, I was. How'd that whole thing come about? It's a great question. Um, Mike hit me up. Mike is like a real um, purveyor of new music. He's a real passionate music fan, which is something I really admire tremendously about him. And I guess he found my song Bloodwater somewhere. And he uh, followed me on Instagram. And I, I was sure it was like either a fan account or, you know, his, his assistant or something. But it was Mike Shinoda of Fort Minor and Lincoln Park. And uh, we linked up, got breakfast one time because we found out we lived relatively close to one another. And he invited me and my collaborator Boone to his uh, studio where he played me um, an unreleased version of the song Running From My Shadow. And uh, I, me and Kev got to write the, the end of the song with him and uh, that was what came out. We got to perform it together, went, went on tour with him a little bit. It's pretty cool. No way. And neither one of us did it. That's okay. <laughs> what were you going to teach? I was going to be a primary school teacher, partially because I was just too terrified to uh, to pick a concentration. Like, I didn't have a particular subject as that passion. I thought it was going to be creative writing or English, but I didn't have the work ethic or the discipline or the ability to listen to authority figures. So I wasn't cut out for, for public school education, but I like to say the teachers are the real rock stars, and uh, I'm very grateful, and I try to take the spirit that I brought with me to the education part of my life, which is empowering young people and trying to enable them to take uh, control of their own destiny, their own futures, and I want to bring that into the music I make. So, uh, But yeah, the world needs more passionate people in, in the education profession, so hopefully we can um, compensate them appropriately and uh, enable people to uh, pick that pa profession up because it's important. It's important. It's the future. So. Uh oh. I always try to get one good secret about everyone. A secret. Something that people might not know. And it doesn't have to be like big and juicy unless you want it to be. Like, I can't ride a bike. Wow. Yeah. You should pick that up. That's an important one. Yeah. Our secret about me is that I'm very competitive when going out for food. So if we go out for food, I need my meal to look better than yours. Or I get really upset. I get really disappointed. Whenever we're on tour, it's like. It's a cutthroat decision. We spend a lot of time staring at the menu before I'm comfortable making my choice and living with it. Because if I lose, my food doesn't taste as good. And then do you have, like, food regret and switch with other people at the table? Uh, only if I can somehow, like, give them a pass to switch next time. It's like a black market. It's, uh, it's true capitalism at its finest, you know. It's very libertarian style, so. Excellent. Well, 
and tell all my listeners where they can find you on all the You can find me at Grandson if you're curious, if you want to be a part of the grandkids, and you can find the nonprofit movement that we're starting called XX Resistance at xxresistance.org, where we are arming local community organizers and charities across America to advance an inclusive, progressive agenda for the future of young people in this country. Yeah, rock and roll. I'm Grandson. We out. We out.